Hello everybody, welcome to my video on Google SketchUp Basics. Today I'm going to talk about the toolbar at the top. The first tool is the Select tool. When you choose the Select tool, you can click on different things in your model and it will highlight it so you can modify it in different ways. The next tool that's helpful is the Pencil tool. The Pencil tool basically just lets you make lines. So I can click anywhere I want and make a line. Notice this line is green. That means I'm parallel to the green axis. I can also go anywhere I want. I don't have to be parallel to that axis, but I can also be parallel to the red axis or the blue axis. I'm just going to go parallel to the green axis for right now. I can make a line specific dimensions also. I can go 12 feet. The feet symbol is the apostrophe symbol on the keyboard. You press enter and it's automatically 12 feet. The next tool I'll talk about is the rectangle tool. The rectangle tool is pretty simple. It's like the line tool. You click once, let go of the mouse, and then drag in the direction you want to go. Notice, when I'm moving the rectangle around, the dimensions are changing down in the bottom of my screen. So I can pay attention to those dimensions to see how big or small I want to make my rectangle. I'm going to make my rectangle 20 feet by 25 feet and notice how I typed it in the dimensions at the bottom I used comma as a separator and the apostrophe as my feet symbol and then I can press enter and it makes my rectangle exactly how big I want it. Before I get too much further I want to talk about the mouse tools. With the mouse I can actually zoom in and out using my scroll wheel so I'm rolling the scroll wheel right now to zoom out and zoom in I can also press and hold down on the scroll wheel to get different perspectives on the things that are in my model. So that's very helpful. Anytime you want to disable a tool, you can always press escape. I should have done that earlier when I was playing with the line tool. That way it would have stopped dragging my line everywhere on the screen. I'll show you that real quick. If you're making a rectangle where you decide you don't want to, you can just press escape and it takes it away. The next tool I want to talk about is the circle tool. After selecting the circle, you can click anywhere you want and notice it'll kind of highlight the radius in your picture. It also gives the dimensions down in the right corner of your screen. I'm just going to type in the dimensions of 20 feet and press enter. Up next is the arc tool. This one I don't use as much but it's helpful at times. To use the arc tool you select your starting point and it actually gives you a lot of helpers down here on the bottom of your screen. So I select my start point, my end point, and then this part right here is called the bulge. How big do you want it to make that arc? I'll say I want to make my arc maybe a five foot bulge. So it's pretty simple. While I'm at it, I want to also discuss the undo key. There are also keyboard shortcuts such as Command Z, which is undo. If you hit your command or on a Windows PC, it'll be Control Z. Control Z is undo. That's really helpful. So anytime you make a mistake, you can always undo it quickly and easily. So I'll make that arc one more time. My start point, my end point, and I'll do a bulge this time of 10 feet. And very simple. I'm not going to talk about this next tool a whole lot. Uh, it's called Make a Component. That's when you want to group together a lot of things but I will talk about the tape measure. This is very helpful for checking your dimensions, making sure you have things made correctly. I can select or click once where I want to start measuring and I can look down at my measurements at the bottom to see how big my shape is and I can see that that line is 20 feet long. This line is 25 feet long so it's very very simple. Remember again I can press escape and it takes that tool away and I can go measure something else. I can measure this line and make sure it was 12 feet exactly. Once again, escape to release it. Next up is the paint bucket. This is really cool because you can actually select different colors and add them onto your shapes. If you're on a Windows machine, it won't look exactly like this. It'll be a little bit different. This one is the one I really like. It's the texture palettes. This allows you to add in brick. And if you zoom in, you can see it a little bit better. 
Um, you can do different styles of brick. It's very easy to switch back and forth, and it looks really realistic when you zoom in. And you can also select things such as roofing for when you're making houses and things later on, and it makes some simple types of roofing. All right, so I'm pretty much done with that. It's pretty easy. It's fun to mess around with. I'll talk about the next tool, which I think is one of the neatest features, which is the push-pull tool. This is pretty awesome because it lets you make things in 3D with very little effort. I can click any part of this model that I want and kind of drag upwards with the mouse, and it automatically makes my shape 3D. I'll orbit around so you can see a little bit better. I can make it as tall or as short as I'd like. And once again, I can type in dimensions such as 14 feet. And so I've made basically a rectangular prism very simply. I can also click and drag up another piece and tell it I want it to be the same height as this rectangular prism. And I'm done with that piece. I can also do the same thing with my cylinder. Say I want it to be the same height. And now all those pieces are at the same height. Notice when I did pull it up, I covered up my person. I could always lower it just so I could see part of them if I wanted. It's kind of neat. You can see their head poking out. Up next, I want to talk about the move tool. This tool is kind of difficult for some people because they have to understand that if it's attached to something else, then it won't move correctly. For instance, if I want to move just this top piece, notice it's attached to a lot of different things. So it's going to drag everything that that piece is attached to. I can press escape and it'll take it right back to where I had it. This is better for moving a shape such as a rectangle or a square. So I can select my move tool. And I like to move also with the corners. And I always move corner to corner. Notice I can't move just this corner because it's attached to a lot of other things. So what I should have done is select the whole piece first, then select the move tool, then grab the corner I want. So I can grab and go corner to corner and it moves nice and neatly. I'll show you that one more time. If I have a rectangle out somewhere and I want to move it, so I select it first, then select the move tool and grab the corner and move to another corner and it moves it exactly where I want it. Always move corner to corner. Up next is a little more challenging tool. It's the rotate tool. But before you select rotate, use your select tool and tell it what you want to rotate. Maybe I want to rotate all of these pieces in this area. Um, to select multiple pieces, I can hold down control or command and select multiple things at once. Alright, so now I'm ready to rotate. So you tell it where you want to rotate about, so that's my position I want to rotate about. And then you have to align the bottom of the protractor and now you can begin your rotation. So notice it did drag a lot of other stuff because I was actually attached to that circle. Um, so I could rotate a different direction if I wanted. Um, and notice at the bottom of your screen, in the bottom right, it tells you the angle that you're rotating about. Maybe I just wanted to rotate 45 degrees. And that's very simple. Now you don't see how I stretched it out as much. Oh, notice I have a little glitch here because I didn't select all the pieces on the shape. I did not select these components over here. That's why it kind of looks funny in this back area. So quick and easy. I'll show you real quick with the rectangle how to rotate. So if you have a rectangle out there, select it first. Grab your rotate tool. Select your point of rotation. Align the bottom of the protractor. And now you can rotate maybe 90 degrees and it quickly and simply does that for you. So, pretty neat tool. Up next is your offset tool. I really like this tool. Um, it helps simplify a lot of things. Um, offset allows you to make an enlargement 
or a reduction of whatever shape you select. So I could make just a little bit of an enlargement on that rectangle that I just made. Maybe I want it to be exactly five feet larger. And that's simple to do. I could also use that same tool again and enlarge the outside shape. Maybe I'll make that 10 feet larger this time. And it does exactly that. I can do the same thing for this circle over here. I can go 10 feet larger on it and it makes a circle that's 10 feet larger than the one I drew earlier. So this is really simple. I can do this all day long. I can make one smaller maybe by 5 feet and it does exactly what I wanted. Here's another way to orbit. You can also select the orbit tool, click and hold down and orbit. I like using the shortcuts on the mouse though. This is your pan tool. It allows you to grab something and kind of recenter it on the center of your screen, or move it to the center of your screen. Here's your zoom tool, which once again you can do on your mouse. You can zoom in and out, um, or you can click and move your mouse up and down. I like using the mouse. And really the last tool I want to talk about is your get models. This is pretty nice because pretty much anything you want to find, somebody's made a model of it. Maybe I want a Corvette. So I can type in Corvette and it'll bring up a lot of models of a Corvette. And I can simply click it and tell it I want it to download the model and say yes, I want to load directly into the model. And now you can place it wherever you'd like. Maybe I'll place it right there. And you can zoom in on it. I'm going to press escape to take care of those blue lines. And you can see the Corvette. It's really nice. This person took a lot of time when they were creating this Corvette. You can do that with anything you imagine. Goodbye.